and he left. <laughs> okay, this hole, and some of you may do this a little different. The idea of what we're calling the Becker hole is I want occiput in my hands, and I want uh, mastoid process. The mastoid process is mostly temporal bone, partly occipital bone, okay? So generally speaking, when your thumb is right behind the ears here on the mastoid process, you're going to be on temporal bone. If I push that in, this will move. If you've had trouble feeling anything here, and you're not sure that you're feeling something, if you take them and squish them both at the same time, you're going to feel your fingers coming closer together, okay? Because of the nature of the suture. Don't worry, I'm not going to squish you. So if I push that in, the temporal bone is going to do this. It's going to externally rotate along that petrous, the petrous ridge is going this way. If you can't envision it in your head, don't worry about it. You have the, you have the pictures. But the, right along that petrous ridge, it's going to rock. Should they be out of phase, which I said will happen when the Tyrannosaurus rex rules the earth again, maybe a few times you'll actually see something like that, or you just want to move the temporal bones, okay? Because we can't move them by pushing on the squama. Pushing it against the parietal bones isn't going to achieve much, but pushing it away from the parietal bones, there's nothing holding it there. That's why we did this temp fascial release here. This is a suction cup that's going to pull it out, okay? So there's nothing that's really holding it here. So if I push medially, it does want to come out, okay, and you'll feel it move. But to go the opposite way and push it further against the parietal, you're not going to feel much. So we can just do a temporal wobble, which is to put both my hands together in the occiput and on the mastoid process. Now we said that internal and external rotation is synchronous with flexion and extension. So, flexion happens with which rotation? Paul. <coughs> you got a 50% chance of getting this one right. You got a 50-50 here. When this goes into flexion, okay. the other bones go into external. internal or external rotation, the paired bones. External. You've made a good choice, my son. They go into you're correct. They go into external rotation. So I want when she's when I'm feeling her occiput going into uh, flexion, which is pressure in the table. That's the time when my thumb should be going medial. And then you can relax your thumbs, pressure, relax, pressure, and go together. In this, excuse me, in a situation where they're out of sync, just so you understand what that means clinically, because it's again something people talk about where one's going into internal rotation and one's going into external rotation, how can I tell which one is out of phase? Well, We're so near the end. External rotation. How can I tell which one's out of phase, Matthew? Okay, but it's uh, when you... I had such high flexing. hopes for you, right up until that answer. When you're flexing... Whichever one's moving more. Let's say they're moving, but they're out of phase. One's going to internal rotation at the same time with the other's going to external rotation. Which one is doing the proper thing? This is such a simple answer. You're right. making it difficult for yourself. It should. It should. When you're when you're going into flexion, the when that's externally rotated should be very easy and continue to external rotation. External. You're so close yet so far. Okay. Now just dissect your answer. I have so, two temporal bones. Hold on. Okay. One is going to internal rotation, one's going to external rotation. Right. Which one is the correct one? External. external rotation is the correct one. Really? But when, when you're flexing, How can you're, you are, know you that? are you flexing? You have to well, that's what you need to know. Well, yeah, when you're flexing, the one that's in external rotation should be. That's the answer. Yeah. That's the answer. So you can't know, just say, I'm evaluating the temporal bones. That's why you're holding the occipital bone. Right. So when the occipital bone's going into flexion, then that's when you expect your thumbs coming in. Right. So, so in the situation where you would feel, and it can happen, but it's, it's, it's just not happening in your office every day. It's, it's just not happening. What you're going to feel is you go, into, you go into flexion, one thumb goes medial, one thumb gets pushed lateral. Mm -hmm. The one that went medial is in phase. Right. So you can follow this, you can follow this situation, and then hold the one that is out of phase. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. this is out of phase, you have to wait until it externally rotates and hold your thumb there through one half of a phase and then release them together. Okay. In other words, 
One's going through external rotation, one's going through internal rotation. You're not going to push in the squamous, you're only going to push in the mastoid and you're only going to release pressure in the mastoid. Okay? So you have to wait, if this is the bad boy here, and it's going to external rotation, and it should be internal. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this is the other one. This is the bad boy. So I'm going like this. This one's doing correct. So I have to wait until the bad boy goes into external rotation, put pressure with my thumb, follow the phase out here, and then release together. Mm -hmm. and do it one more time so, you, so everyone's clear, at least conceptually on the idea. This is the one that's out of phase. It's going to external rotation because the, the mastoid is going medial, and it should be internal. This one's now going internal because the oxygen, everything else is going into extension. It's extension. Okay? Right. When they go into flexion, this goes into external rotation, and this is the one that's incorrect. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to hold the squama. I'm going to wait until I go to another phase, and I'm going to put pressure there. And, and just keep pressure with your thumb until it comes out, and then release the other. Because it continues to go through the cycle, it's just out of phase. Mm -hmm. uh. So, but the way you put it in phase is by holding my elbow and then re releasing. Okay. So, you can, um, I, I, some of you can hold like this. Me, I have to go like this, or otherwise I'm, I'm too far away from the size of my hands. So if I put pressure here, you can put pressure on, off, on, off, on, off, on, on both temporals, and you can feel that temporal bone wobble. It's called temporal wobble, this technique. And for that reason, if it was that easy to go out of phase, you would just all be walking around like that all the time from me wobbling, and you just don't see it. You just don't see it. Okay, so let's just try that Becker hold and that wobble and make sure that me or Alfred or Victor comes around to uh, at least do it to you.